was Phil's idea to climb Kilimanjaro. I remember the day I came in from my office and he said, I, I think I found what we should do. And I knew it was going to be something crazy because he does like to do a crazy adventure. Yeah, it was my idea initially. Um, and I think initially Faye just sort of told me I was an idiot and like that was it, there's absolutely no way, like that's just not doable. I looked, he had it on his laptop, I looked, it said family adventure Kilimanjaro and I sort of huffed. We're a family that likes challenges um, and that one seemed like quite a big one. I can remember Harry's reaction was very positive, he was like yeah I'm up for that 100%, he loves a challenge. And I was like, oh my days, I was, I, I mean I was really up for it but like I was surprised and I knew that it was going to be difficult. Grace was the same. My dad was like, how would you feel about climbing a mountain? And I remember I said, if it's Kilimanjaro, I'm not doing that. And I didn't even realise that he was talking about Kilimanjaro. I just, and then he told me, yes, yeah, Kilimanjaro, and I was like, oh. We were confident in all of our fitness. I think we were worried about the altitude. It was the unknown of, you know, will this hit our body? And, you know, we'd heard, you know, the fittest people in the world can't get up there. You know, what if, you know, Faye got hit and then, you know, she had to go back? Or what if one of the children got hit with the altitude sickness? Who, who would go back with them? I mean, I was scared we weren't going to make it because, like, obviously, it's a big achievement and I'd be really upset if we didn't make it. I was also worried about my sister. I was very nervous that I wasn't going to be able to complete it and then like ruining it for my family. I think the most anxious person of all of us was, was Faye. I was absolutely terrified from about February. So we climbed in August and genuinely from February I thought a lot about it and I had some pretty dark thoughts in my head about are we doing the right thing, should we be doing this, should we be taking the kids. I was terrified, genuinely terrified of doing it. Our first impressions of Tanzania were everyone was unbelievably friendly. The people were really nice. It was cheery, so fun. I mean, they, they collected us from our hotel on what is now known as the fun bus and the music was blaring there I remember it they were playing reggae and the kids were like wow this is amazing everything felt so exciting and animated and and it was it was a lovely lovely atmosphere Kids were excited, we were excited. So that really helped take off that initial edge. You know, we got to the bottom and we were watching all the porters weigh the bags and prepare everything. Everything has to be weighed that goes onto the mountain. Everything's weighed at the end when you come off. We're at the gate now. We've been driving for four hours. And what are we gonna do, Gracie? Climb Kilimanjaro. <laughs> ready, Harry? Yeah, I'm ready. The people there are really special, really special, very genuine, very uh, family focused, they love the kids, the kids love them, just really kind people that genuinely wanted us to not only have a great time, but summit as well. <laughs> The start was was fun. It was you know the sort of honeymoon period. We were out. You know we were really excited about getting to the first camp, and they'd mentioned popcorn and hot chocolate and other stuff that we'd get when we got there. Your prediction was perfect. Thank you, Harry. We're here. Ooh. Two and a half hours on the dock. We made it. So we are in our tent, and it's very big. So we've got a little porch out there. Oh. Here we've got two beds 
there's our sleeping bag and the toilet's up there. It's very small. <laughs> home sweet home. We've got hot chocolate, we've got popcorn, we've got tea, we've got like hot chocolate. Oops. Oops. Toothpicks. Oh <laughs> we have our own tent. Right, is that hot? Grace, what are you doing? Toilet. Sup. Today was our first day. It's very cold in here, but I've got hot water bottle at my feet, so I'm fine. But we've got pillows made of clothes, um, head torches, and for dinner we had fruit, potatoes, fish, soup, hot tea, chocolate, and like, yeah. Have a nice sleep, Angel. I will. Night night. Night. Night, bruvs. Mama. Hello. Good morning. Oh, good morning. How did you sleep? Good. Morning tea. Morning tea, Gracie. <laughs> We've just had tea delivered to our tent. Look at that five star treatment here. The first couple of days climbing were exciting, yeah. It was, it was great. We were up on the mountain. Harry was up the front with the lead, um, with the head guide all the time. We were always having to sort of hold him back a little bit because the, the, the guides tell you poly poly, slowly, slowly. How are you feeling, Gracie? Sick, tired, low, full, not hungry. There was one day where Grace was feeling a bit sad um, and a passing crew walked past and, and the, the head guide from that crew uh, came over and he said, I've got a deal for you. Um, I'm gonna give you this stick and we'll, we'll pass it on like a baton. So every time you see me, pass it back to me and every time I see you, I'm gonna pass it back. And this continued for five or six days. Everyone wants you to do well. It's such a nice place to be, that mountain. Are you going to give it a name? Buddy? Yeah. yeah. Buddy the lizard, there he goes. <laughs> the good news is we've spotted the cat, which is here or there. So not too far to go. Matthew said the secret is to walk high and sleep low, so we're going to descend now a little bit. Hey there. Hi. Jumbo. Jumbo. So we're now descending down to our camp so we can sleep a little bit lower. As we descend towards Shirawan camp, we've been told that there, hiding behind the clouds, is Kilimanjaro. Here we are, arriving at Shirawan camp. Here they are, our tent. All right, here we are. Congratulations. <laughs> you are welcome. We are sure of blood you ready. It's the top, hidden by the clouds. Dennis, what have we got for lunch? Lunch today we have burger, pizza, chips and salad, chicken with fruits. Oh, You're much welcome. Dennis is the man. Enjoy the lunch. <laughs> We're currently playing Uno in a tent, also known as Tuno. I just came up with that. <laughs> okay. I've got really rubbish Look, our, ta our table is a slider. This is impressive. You right there, Daddy? Look at my cards. I'm right, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> We're in a Shira One camp and we can see almost all of the top of Kilimanjaro. There she is. Does that make you more excited or more nervous? More excited. <laughs> and how was today? 
Uh, it was longer than expected. It was supposed to be four and a half hours, but it ended up being six hours. But tomorrow's only four hours, I think. Okay, good. So we we'll get tomorrow. Excellent. We just finished our second day, which was a tough hike. And now we're going to sleep uh, whilst faffing. <laughs> and then we're going to wake up tomorrow morning and have tea in bed, which they bring us. And then we're going to leave at 8 o'clock. And it's going to be a four hour hike. And what did we manage to get a glimpse of tonight? Oh yeah, out of our tent we saw the uh, the whole of the top of Kilimanjaro and the peak and it's very high. Are you scared? No, I'm not scared. <laughs> okay, nighty nights. Night night. It's day three now and everywhere's frosted and it's really cold. We've still got a perfect view up there. Hey Dennis. Yes. The porridge is lovely. It's lovely. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. No, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, I'm feeling a lot better today. Yesterday I was feeling like this, but now I'm feeling like this. Oh, nice analogy. Okay, bye, Shira One. There was definitely a turning point. We arrived at camp and we knew because they told us from the start we're going to arrive at camp and usually that meant you could take off your boots, chill out a bit, have dinner, go to bed. And on this particular day we had to go on what they called an acclimatisation hike which was in the wrong way up the mountain which psychologically crushed me because I'm like we're not going that way, we're going that way. Which was to expose us to the higher altitude so that we could come back down to our tents and sleep. We're off on our acclimatisation walk. Had about an hour and a half rest. Struggling a little bit. But we're going to do it. We've basically got to go to the top of that. The acclimatisation hike was very daunting. We started it, we had the time pressure of getting back before it got dark, which was not great. Like time pressures aren't good because you know you've got to work at a certain, pa certain pace. It was actually okay on the way up. It was quite nice. There were other people doing it and high-fiving people on the way up. I'm eating Skittles. But we got to the top and it was almost immediate. It was, it was, in fact, it was like somebody had pressed a switch on Harry that said, you now have altitude sickness. I, I went up there and I got altitude sickness and I was stopping every three seconds, bending over, sick. It was awful. I, I could, couldn't really breathe. It was the worst I think I've ever felt in my life. And then I just remember Matthew, the head guide, once we'd got there, saying, we've got to get Harry down quickly and the colour went from his face. He was a bit wobbly and suddenly, things suddenly got really serious because we'd gone from having like this annoying climb but was quite fun to Harry looking really unwell. So our head guide, Matthew, literally frog marched him back to camp. They were back down way before us um, and that night was horrible. Oh, today's... It's been really, really tough for all of us. But, <laughs> but the, the reality is, these two, she did so well. She got to the top of that peak when she thought she was getting back. She just came back and sleep, so we're really proud of you guys. Okay? Yeah? Yeah. Harry really struggled as well. He was strong at the end. Okay. Well, you were proud of yourself, they weren't you? Were <laughs> no, we're fine, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. We need to have a water bottle. <laughs>
Well, I think it affects lots of people in a different way. It seemed to affect me and Harry in the same way. It didn't kick in for me until the, the following morning. So I was, I was fine coming back down. I didn't think there was a problem. Um, for Harry, he woke up in the middle of the night and was sick. I, me and him were sharing a tent that night, so he was sick on, um, was he sick on me? I don't know, but he was basically sick on the floor in between the two of our sleeping bags. I was lying in my tent with Grace just thinking, what have we done? Have we made a really terrible mistake here? Is this the moment that I was fearing the most where we have to say, sorry guys, we tried our best, but, but we couldn't make it. He was in an absolutely terrible state. So it, 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 for Harry, it made him sick. Um, he couldn't eat anything. And he just had, as a result, he had absolutely zero energy. And also, I don't know how the best way of phrasing it is, it affected our digestion system horrifically badly. Like we were, you know, we couldn't really go an hour or two without having to run around a rock. Um, and uh, yeah. Last night was really, really tough. Harry was sick. Really bad headache. Suffered really bad from the altitude sickness. I had a bit of it as well. Something headache. The lowest moment for me personally was waking up after, the day after the acclimatization hike because I. I thought I was really badly affected, and I affected, but I didn't want to be told I couldn't go on. So I got out of the tent, and the tent was icy, and I just I couldn't see straight. So everything was blurred, and I've never experienced that before. Um, I wasn't sick like Harry was in the night, but I got out, and it was like I don't know, I had five pints or something. I just I couldn't see further than my hand, and also the worry about. Harry and Grace, particularly Harry after the acclimatization hike because he was really, really, really low on energy. I mean, it didn't feel like anything I've ever felt before. I mean, it was... It drained all of my energy. I, I, speaking was tough. Like, walking, I had to stop so, so frequently. It was, it was not good. He looked awful, really, really terrible, no energy. I remember he sat in a chair and I'm putting sun cream on him, just thinking, I, I don't know whether we're gonna be able to carry on with this, this is not good. They were taking his uh, pulse, checking his oxygen, and it all just suddenly, it's like the fun had been squeezed from it, literally like that. Riding off to, I've got a big climb this morning. And then we're dropping back down again altitude wise. Sleep at just below 4,000 meters tonight, so hopefully that will help us. But yeah, this is definitely a big low right now. There it is, Branco Camp. Thank goodness we are here. Look at Grace and Harry. We made it. <laughs> Mountain. <laughs> what have we just done, Gracie? We did some climbing. We did. What did we do when we got down from the climbing? We ate some popcorn. We ate some popcorn. It was yummy, wasn't it? And, and what are you going to do now? Playing double with Dennis. Playing double with Dennis, and who's Dennis? A legendary person. The guides were really nice. The cook was called Dennis, and he we played double on the mountain, and it was really fun. He was he was really nice. He was our, our, our waiter, he called himself, who was just a, a ray of sort of positive sunshine throughout the trip. He was absolutely lovely. He was just brilliant from the start. He kept us smiling when we really didn't feel like smiling. Baby bottle, maziwa. <laughs> You're so good at this. We've all been struggling to eat because altitude, the altitude can affect your appetite. So we're glad to be where we are right now, which is in a tent with a sleeping bag. I've got an absolute pounding headache, which again is completely normal, but you know, 
we're getting there one step closer to actually making it to the top so fingers crossed we'll make it day five we're taking on the Branco wall at the start of the day which you can see directly ahead of us all the human ants climbing their way up the wall Harry and I slept well we had to get up numerous times in the night she's suffering from a little bit of Diarrhea, which is. <laughs> I thought you were going to try and find a good word for it. Then. No, I couldn't find no, a good. Me. I couldn't find a good word for it. guys are amazing. One of them, Matthew, practically carried me up at points. He helped me loads. I mean, <laughs> they could walk up it backwards. They could probably run up it backwards. I'm not sure how. Hi, Amy. <laughs> so we've done the Branco wall. We're now descending. Harry's gone ahead with Matthew because he's really struggling with his mountain sickness, altitude sickness. The guides and the porters and the assistant guides have been so amazing at helping us when any of us have got low or started to struggle. Camp. And there's the top of Kilimanjaro. End of day five, the boys beat us back and they are both completely out cold. I'm making a video. Oh, hello. <laughs> Nighty night. It's the morning of day six. We're at Karanga camp. I'm feeling much better today. Harry's improved. He's still not back to full super strength, Harry Cornhill, but he's definitely better. Mummy's brilliant and awesome as always. Solidly on form, all trip. And there it is. That's where we're heading off at midnight tonight. So, day six, here we come. It's a short day today, so we can get to the next camp. We traverse a little bit and drop a little bit as well, I think. And then, so that we can get lots of rest and then we start at midnight for a seven hour trek to the top. Harry's done unbelievably well pushing through the sickness. He's totally out of energy. He's done well. Up there is Barafu Camp, which is where we'll be getting an early night, ready for a midnight start on a very slow seven hour trek up to the peak, which you probably can't see because there's a cloud. It just went straight past it. Harry's back in the game today. We've arrived at Barafu camp. We're weaving our way through these rock pathways. And the tents are sort of randomly placed in any patch of open ground that they can find. Like something out of Lord of the Rings. Brilliant. MP! 
Iomi strongly leading the way as always. Uh, There's the prettiest face in the world. <laughs> so we're going to bed because at midnight we start our climb to the top of Kilimanjaro. I feel really nervous. Uh, how do you feel, Grace? Cold. Cold. It's cold on the mountain, isn't it? Are we going to smash it? Yeah. I was absolutely, absolutely terrified. Absolutely, like, a f I was having a physical reaction. I was literally shaking with terror. I was dreading it. I just... Because I'd seen videos on YouTube and it just seemed so hard. I, I really did not want to do it. I was like, I just wanted to sleep and stay asleep. I knew, like I knew inside I was going to do it, but I knew it was going to take so much effort and everyone was going to be in an absolute state by the time we got to the top. And I remember Dennis came and he said, I'll knock on your door at midnight and he knocked on the tent and he said, it is time. And I was like, no. <laughs> Day seven. Woo. 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 All right. All the way up. Let's go to the top. Yeah. <sighs> the Just started the hike. Twenty past twelve. At this pace, very very slow. Pole pole. I think it's going to take about seven hours. Faye's very nervous, but hiding it well. You can see here. See all the lights. Understatement of the year. <laughs> like absolutely terrifying. See all the lights. People starting the ascent. You can, I don't know, I don't think you can see. You might be able to see the cap at the top there. So we've got an initial very steep climb, which is where you can see the lights. And then once we get up high, it's then a zigzag um, up to the first point, which is Stella Point. And then we have to, they have to check us out, see how we're coping. We've all got sort of constant headaches. Um, but they have to monitor all that stuff to make sure. And if we can go on to Uhuru, which is the, the main peak, then we will. In our minds, there's no question that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it. <laughs> so, off we go. We've been going for an hour and 35. Summit night was brutal from the start because it's pitch black. It's in the middle of the night. Like, kids were already finding it tough 10 minutes in. And, and so was I, like, it wasn't just them, I was finding it tough. And it's relentless. It's, there's no flat bits, uphill flat bit. It is just a slog. Grace was incredible. She was her mother's daughter, just got her head down. She didn't say anything and she just went for it. Harry started off not so well, he was still massively underfed like he, though he wasn't technically sick he, he hadn't been able to build himself back up again I was struggling a little bit with the thin air so he's got up with Matthew this is not going well at all we've been going for three hours 48 minutes Grace has been unbelievable for the first well she's still been unbelievable I just made the stupid error of giving her a little bit of energy bar, which she, she didn't want, but she ate it. And it made her vomit everywhere. Blue, but she's got back on it and she's on it again, but that was totally my fault. I feel like we should never have done this. I, d I definitely thought maybe we'd done the wrong thing because the in <laughs> because suddenly there's no enjoyment. 
Like there were so many moments on that mountain which were just brilliant and enjoyable and the kids loved it and great life lessons. But really on that summit night, I'm not sure how much of that we enjoyed. Chris? 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 Ask yeah. Harry. How you, far? Have to, you have to ask me. How far? How far? No, not very far, Chris, okay? <laughs> Don't forget our promise, okay? Let's <laughs> photo to the, to the board, okay? Okay, Chris? Huh? Promise me again. My mum, she was really good. Like, she didn't give up. She didn't. She didn't make any excuses or anything. She didn't say a word, she just kept going, which sort of made me want to do it for her as well and for my family. It's taken you six <laughs> days and four hours to get here. The sunrise is coming. The sunrise and is then coming. after you feel it very warm. Oh, so yeah. you are yeah, going to come to Kilimanjaro. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yes. okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's, let's, go. Go. let's, go. let's, go. let's go. Be happy. What a team. Be happy. <laughs> Yeah, be happy. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five hours twenty we've been going. It's twenty past five in the morning. Faye and I are seriously starting to question our parenting decisions. Maybe this was one step too far. I'm finding this really, really tough. You can see some of the glacier at the top there. We're so close now, another two hours maybe. For me, it was the altitude sickness. It literally, I mean, it destroyed me. I could not, it ruined everything. I could not breathe, I could not walk. I couldn't speak, I couldn't eat. My appetite was like awful. Harry was really, really sick. He was, you know, if we'd been at home here, he would have been in bed. He would have been in bed resting. And we're on Africa's highest mountain. There was a moment halfway up the mountain, maybe it was still dark, maybe it was 4 a.m. in the morning where Harry was, he was really, really in a low place um, and Matthew had been really helping him. And, and I, I, I said to Matthew, I think he's gonna have to go down. And I, I actually said, Matthew, I, I'll go with him. Ideally, you can take, or somebody can take him, but Harry, I, I said, I, I want Harry to go down. And Matthew just looked at me and he went, no. You know, I, I was technically the boss, like, like Faye's the boss really, but like to them, they felt like I was the boss. And I, I said, he's got to go down. And Matthew looked at me and went, no. Like, he, I could tell in his eyes, absolutely not. Like, he, there's not way he can get to the top. At no point was there any pressure on the kids to keep going. If they had said, I can't do this anymore, I want to go back, we would have taken them back. Um, but he just kept saying, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it. Obviously, I was thinking like of what it was going to be like taking that photo up at the top. I'd seen people do it before. And my dad, my mum, my sister, they helped me a lot. They encouraged me. And the porters as well, they helped me. Our head guide, Matthew, he really wanted to get us to the top. The sun's going to be up soon. About half six will probably be the full sunrise. <sighs> Right there, the snow. We're so close. I remember at one point I, f I got really emotional because everything's just suddenly on top of you and it's hard and your body's aching and you, you feel terrible and you don't know if you, like how, long, how much longer is it gonna take to get there and Grace is asking me, are we there yet? <laughs> I'm like, we're not there yet. And uh, I remember feeling really like, what in the hell have we done? What's wrong? Talk to me. It's just very, very, very hard. And I knew it would be hard and things are hard. It's just hard, physically hard, completely mentally draining. Getting two kids up here. The porters, the kindness that they show is unreal. 
They're just so supportive. But I feel like I now think that we're gonna make it. And I'm sort of happy tears, really. I don't know. I sort of feel like I'm slightly drunk. <laughs> Well, I'm with Harry and Matthew. So I think we're going to have a cup of tea now. Matthew's very happy that we made it. Oh, it was freezing cold before the sun came up, like icy, icy winds. And then the sun starts to come up. And I don't know, we were just like little flowers unfurling. The sun came and just feeling the warmth on your face everything started to feel a bit better and we knew like it's it's the next day now and it's today that we're going to get there and that felt really good cheers harry Good job, brother thank you so much for your help with grace oh Hello, How are you? i saw the clouds beneath us i could then see because the hours before it was just pitch black just one step in front of the other it was cold and that was bad but when the sunrise came up sort of gave me a bit of hope to just keep going because you're almost there. I can't remember it now, but I remember seeing it and I remember thinking, yes, this is amazing. This is what I did all this work for. But I was in a horrible way, so I don't remember it now. Kids have struggled a lot. Handled it in different ways. The sun's coming up. We've got the clouds. Unbelievably beautiful. That's very hard work. Don't worry. Yes. You are so strong. Be happy. You did a great job. Yeah. I know we're not at the top yet. With these kids, you did a great job. We are. We're still at points. What I realised at that point was that I thought nobody was more determined to get us all to the top of that mountain than me. Um, and I realised at that point that actually Matthew, the head guide, was more determined to get them to the top of that mountain. He was like, I, I feel a little bit emotional talking about it because he was the guy that took the lead in the end. I always thought that would be my role, but actually he was the man that got us to the top of that mountain. Like, worth his weight in absolute gold to that man, hero. Drago mama, you heard it, you heard it. Queen with your daughter and son, be proud of the Kilimanjaro. Yeah, sure. Stellar Point was the moment that was so, I felt so relieved. I've never felt so relieved in my whole life to get anywhere than there. It was just, it was just absolute, by that point, it was 100% that we were going to make it. And that felt really, really good. The kids were relieved. I was relieved. Our head guide was crying because he was relieved. You know, it's, it's a big deal for him taking a family up. He wanted us to make it. And that felt really good. We were, we were on the home straight at that point. We're on top of Africa. Look at the glacier. Phil, how you doing? The point between <laughs> Stella Point and Uhuru it's a bit like zombie land because the altitude is, is extreme at that point. There's a lot of people, um, you know, you start to like, am I walking in a straight line? It's a bit no, like, really close now. you know, going out in a city center after dark. Everyone looks a bit wobbly. How are you feeling? The dog's dinner? <laughs> Harry was really struggling by then. So the team had said to us, we, we actually just, we do need to hurry up here. At the point where I was almost at the top, I was like 200 metres from the top and I just bent over and started puking. Like, I, I, I couldn't, I didn't want to walk. Yeah, this is good, Harry. This is good. Hello again. Hello again. Take the photo. Oh. Give him a hug, Grace. He deserves a hug. We can help you, Grace. Good, good. Well done, Grace. <laughs> Almost there. 
That's amazing. Yeah. Really, 15 minutes to there. Do you see those people there? Yeah. When we reach there, it's flat. Easy. Okay. Easy. That's the peak right there. We've arrived. We've done it. Come in, everyone. Group hug. Lots of emotions. I mean, when we got to the top, it was like so amazing. We've got to the top. We've finally done it. And also, I want to sit down. <laughs> come in, Harry. Stand up. Stand up, buddy. Stand up. Come in, guys. Come in. Everyone, come in. <laughs> you did a great job. Come in, guys. We had a little team huddle, um, and that was quite sweet, that moment. Well done, guys. Thank you so much. Form a circle, guys. Come in. Say call, like, honestly. It was, yeah like triumphant we felt it, it felt like a team and we felt like a team everyone had helped you know massively to get us there and it just it, it was yeah t so tired but at the same time so relieved and but also jubilant and my over overwhelming feeling was I was just so proud of the two children we you know we'd had you know cross words getting up there we you know it'd been a, it'd been a real battle like for Harry to get through that, actually, an unbelievable achievement. And for Grace, as, you know, she's an absolute trooper. She is her, her mother's daughter. She, she, she was the same. Head down, off she went. And unbelievably proud of Faye as well, because she did not complain once. And it was bigger than anything I think she would have ever thought she was capable of doing. I've always had I think she's capable of doing anything, but I was just so proud of Faye and, and Harry and Grace. Honestly, as a, as a family of four, it's been like way harder than we ever thought it could be. So I'm really proud of all three of them, but we're so grateful to Matthew, Iomi, Harry for getting us through. Because Thank it's a real so battle much. as a family. You, you want to encourage them to go forward, but then you feel like a real kid sending them up. But they've done it, haven't they? So, we did it. You, you so did it. Congratulations. With many tears. Congratulations. I'm really proud of everyone. Thank you guys so much. Love you guys. Love you guys. Wow. I'm, I'm genuinely really, oh don't. <laughs> I'm really proud of them because that was really hard. And um, they, they dug really deep. Like I know that there were moments where, like, like I said, if we were at home, they would have been in bed. They wouldn't have been climbing somewhere. Um, but I hope that what this shows them in years to come when they look back and think about their experiences that they are incredibly capable. And if they believe in something enough, they'll, they'll be able to, to do it. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I, I've done it. And I thought, that, that's a great achievement. Like, no one can ever take this away from me now. And now we, nothing's hard. We just have to walk down and then we've done. Yeah. We had to put in a lot of work to get up there. A lot of ups, a lot of downs. I look back on all that work I did to get there and it's just it's amazing that I managed to do it. I think there's a lot that you can learn from that experience but I, I think the main one is I think if you if you humans if you set your mind to something and you surround yourself with the right people who are going to help you achieve it and you believe it's possible cool things can happen. Oh, <laughs>
here we are, arriving back down to Mweka Gate. All the buses ready to load everyone's stuff onto. Fun buses, yeah, exactly. People picking up certificates. Harry, summited. Hurry Peak, Grace, same two, and Faye, look at her go.